Story continued from Phylak Liu episode. One million years ago in Outback Australia, a continent filled with creatures unlike any found in the entire world, including large marsupials like Phylak Liu. This female is the top mammal predator on the continent, though that does not mean she is safe in these lands. Only a few hours ago, she had her kill stolen from her by a Megalania, and now has been forced to seek shelter in an abandoned burrow for the night. In the morning, she is awoken by a herd of Diprotodon. These large marsupials are herbivores, but can be very dangerous, and their agitated calls indicate that there is a threat nearby. The female wonders if it is because of her that the herd is acting strangely, However, she can feel footsteps through the ground, and they are coming from behind her, above the burrow. Stomping across the dusty earth comes one of the continent's top predators, a Megalania. At seven meters long and over a ton in weight, he is a dragon in the flesh. Similar in appearance to modern monitor lizards, but far larger and brimming with muscle. The huge reptile stops just over the top of the burrow, with no idea that the thigh like Leo is beneath him. The female remains still, as running now might trigger a chase that she didn't have a great chance of winning. However, things only got worse, as from the trees appears a second Megalania, also a large male, who approaches the first male defiantly. When two Megalania meet, it is rarely ever peaceful. They let out low rumbles from their chests, barely audible, but the sound travels through the ground, signaling their intents. This is a challenge for territory, and if one male doesn't back down, there will no doubt be a fight. The herd of Diprotodon begin to clear out, but the female Thylacoleo is now stuck between two huge reptiles. She needs to make a decision, and fast. The threat displays by the two Megalania have fallen through, and in a burst of speed, the resident male rushes forward and rears up onto his hind legs. His rival does the same, and both slam together and begin to wrestle. Over two tons of angry lizard impact, and the ground shakes. The herd of Diprotodon move away from the fighting, and now the Phylak Leo is effectively trapped, with the two brutes fighting in front of the burrow's entrance. Standing on their hind legs, the reptiles are over three meters tall, and they violently shove each other, sending dust and debris in all direction. There is some technique in these fights, as each one tries to push the other over and get them on their back. They also do not bite each other, despite having powerful jaws. The intruding male drives his opponent backwards, sliding him across the sands, the Phylaka Leo sees an opening and tries to run, but the intruding male gets pushed back, and his flailing tail nearly smashes the marsupial in the face. She retreats into the burrow and waits again. The resonant male lifts the other male up and throws him to the ground. He tries to pin him, but the newcomer is quick, and rears back up and gets right back into the fold. The nerve-wracked female marsupial tries again, but finds herself almost getting stuck between the two massive lizards. It's now or never. Retreat back to the burrow, or risk being crushed. Using her strong legs, she pounces forward, turning sideways mid-air. And right between the dueling megalania, a random tail swipe hits her back legs, but she sticks to landing and bolts for the trees. Behind her, the defending male pushes the other male backwards and tackles him from the side. The two collapse into the burrow, which completely caves in under their weight, half burying them. Now on top of his opponent, the successful Megalania pins him to the ground as he tries to shake himself free. This continues for a few minutes until the male is satisfied that his strength has been shown. He then twists his body and throws the loser across the ground. The intruder tries to slash back, but the first male's claws slash across his face, leaving deep wounds instantly causing bleeding. The victorious male lets out another deep rumble from his chest, a final warning to leave while he can. The loser turns tail and retreats back the way he came. 
Now with dominance asserted, the Megalania rested on the destroyed burrow, eager to bask in the sun for as long as he needs. From the tree line, the Phylacaleo looked back at the two separating lizards. She would never have had this trouble if she slept in a tree. Lesson learned. No matter how comfortable the burrow looked, it wasn't worth it. Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we will be breaking down the largest lizard of all time, Megalania. Megalania, or Varanus priscus, as it is officially known, is an extinct species of monitor lizard that lived in Australia between 1.5 million and 50,000 years ago. Though its remains are mostly fragmentary, it is closely related to other lizards in the monitor family, such as the Komodo dragon and the Parenti. Estimates for its size vary, especially when it is scaled to its modern counterparts. If it was similar to a Komodo dragon, it may have been between 6 and 7 meters long, but if it was more like a lace monitor, it could have been 8 meters long, with most of that length being its tail. Weight is also highly variable. Low calculations put it between 200 and 300 kilograms, but high estimates say it could be a whopping 2 tons. It is important to remember that most reptiles have indeterminate growth, so they would have continued to grow throughout their lives. During its time, Megalania may have been the apex predator on the continent, preying on other megafauna, such as medium and large marsupials. It may not have been very fast, however, and likely relied on ambush, letting its prey get close to it before bursting forward to take it down quickly, and not getting into a prolonged chase. Once it got a hold of its prey, its large serrated teeth would have been perfect for slicing through the soft sections of prey. There is another weapon that Megalania may have used, venom. Komodo dragons have venom glands in their jaws. Once bitten, a victim's wounds will continue to bleed, weakening the prey. They also have large amounts of bacteria in their mouths, which also infect the wound upon biting. So the victim suffers blood loss and multiple infections, and will eventually collapse from its wounds, or be too weak to fight back. So a Komodo dragon may bite an animal one day, and then only feed on it days or weeks later. If Megalania used this to kill large animals like the Protodon, it wouldn't need to be fast on its feet, just patient. Though we can't be certain Megalania was venomous, if it was, that would make it the largest venomous vertebrate that ever lived. It was also heavily armoured, with thick scales acting like chainmail, and large claws that could have aided it in climbing. It would have competed with some other predators, like Phylacaleo, which it likely stole kills from, and Quincana, a terrestrial crocodile that may have been similar in size to Megalania. It is also highly likely that the first indigenous settlers interacted with Megalania. The youngest remains of the animal show that they were definitely around well after humans first arrived on the continent. Whether they hunted humans, or vice versa, is not known. However, these interactions may have given rise to the stories of the mythical Wyomi and Mongongali. I really like Megalania, a powerful predator that used the tactics of Komodo dragons. There's something quite menacing knowing that if you get bitten by this giant, but get away, it will continue to follow you waiting for its venom to wear you down until you don't have the strength to run or fight. Sometimes Komodo dragons don't even bother to kill the helpless victims and eat them while they're still alive. Personally, I feel like it is often drawn as a large Komodo dragon. I'd like to see someone draw it more like a Parenti, as they are awesome looking lizards. On a final note, I can't imagine being one of the first humans to see one of these in the flesh as if ancient Australia wasn't extreme enough. But what do you think of Megalania? Do you think you could escape this giant? Let me know what lesser known creature you'd like me to cover in a future episode, and until then, thank you for watching.